Hi, I'm Stumpy Nubs, and like many woodworkers, I've built my share of workbenches. But some of our readers don't want to build a workbench. They have no more interest in making their own bench than they have in making their own tools, like maybe hand plans. They'd rather buy a good bench so they can concentrate on the type of woodworking they enjoy. It was for those woodworkers that I made the ultimate sacrifice. I moved my homemade Rubo workbench over to the other workshop, and I moved in a new $2,500 Swedish-made workbench from Joburg's. Yes, I am willing to subject myself to all of this handcrafted European beach so that you can find out if it's really worth the price tag. You're welcome. But evaluating a workbench isn't easy, and price doesn't always equate to performance. Certain features or lack thereof can make or break a bench, and knowing what to look for before you buy can save you years of regret. So let's talk about what makes a good bench. Let's start with overall construction. A good bench should be stiff and stable. Here in America, we make a lot of workbenches out of maple and oak. But for centuries, the Europeans have been making theirs from beech because it's an extremely stiff and fine-grained wood, which makes it one of the most stable woods around. In fact, hand plane makers had preferred beech for centuries because of its stability. Some of my hand planes are more than 200 years old and still growing strong, made out of beech. Stability is very important in a workbench too. And besides choosing the right material, the way you construct the top can be a major factor. Most bench tops are made by laminating together narrow boards. This resists cupping when compared to a single slab top. But you want to avoid laminated benches with boards that don't run down the full length of the bench top because every end grain splice compromises the top's overall stiffness. You can't tell by looking at it, but this particular bench also has tongue and groove joinery between all of these laminated layers, which adds to its stiffness. That's a feature that is nice to look for as well. A bench top should also be thick to resist sagging. I've seen benches with inch and a half maple tops that look nice, but they sag over time. Unless you have a very short bench, you should insist on a top that's at least three inches thick. This one is around three and a quarter inches, and it's an inch thicker at the aprons. That's a lot of hardwood. In fact, this top alone weighs about 200 pounds. And that brings us to another important factor when choosing a bench. It should be heavy. I mean, really heavy. If you can lift it by yourself, it's not heavy enough. This one is about 300 pounds empty, a quarter of a ton when the cabinet is full of tools. That's important because sawing and planing can rock and shift a lighter bench, wasting your valuable energy and, quite frankly, driving you nuts. I hate a rocking bench. I can't stress enough the benefits that come with a workbench that is rock solid. But even the heaviest, stiffest bench in the world is nothing more than an overbuilt table if it doesn't have the right features in the right places. A woodworking bench is meant to do one thing. Hold your work. And I don't mean it should just hold it flat on a work surface. It should hold it securely so that you can work a board's edges, faces, and ends. That starts with the vices. A vise should be very easy to open and close. This particular one has very coarse threads, so it only takes a few turns to do it. A vise should also be well built because it's going to take a pounding over its lifetime. And it should resist racking forces. This is important because many tasks require you to clamp a workpiece on just one end of the vise. If the jaw doesn't remain parallel to the apron as you apply pressure, it's going to be very difficult to secure your work. Many vices require you to put a scrap of material on the other side of the jaw that's the same thickness as your workpiece to prevent that racking. That's not necessary with this vise because it has heavy iron tracks that run underneath the bench top which resist that racking force and keep it aligned better than any single screw vise I've ever used. The position of your vise is an important factor too. For a right-handed person, a vise should be on the left-hand side of the bench as you're facing it. That's so that you can clamp the leading edge of a workpiece that you intend to edge plane into the vise. Most commercially made benches that come with vices have it in this position already, which means you're kind of out of luck if you're left-handed. This particular bench solves that problem by making a vise that comes off easily and swaps around to the other side. 
I also highly recommend a bench that has an end vise because it allows you to clamp your work pieces flat on the bench top. Of course, you also need certain features in the bench top itself if the end vise is gonna work properly. You'll notice that this one has two rows of holes running across the length of the top. These serve two purposes. They're for bench dogs and they're for holdfasts. Bench dogs are pegs that can bind with your vise to pinch a workpiece securely and hold it down. You want a fair amount of those in your bench top so that you can work with different lengths of stock. And it's also nice if they align with holes in your face vise as well so you can do that on both ends of your bench. Many benches are made for three quarter inch bench dogs. The Joburg's bench comes with a set of heavy steel one inch dogs. You may wonder if one inch is heavier than you need, but it's not really about the dog itself as much as it is about the versatility of the holes. You see, most large holdfasts have a one inch shaft. So by making the dogs the same size, you can utilize the same holes for both the dogs and the holdfast, giving you a lot more clamping options on top of your bench without just filling it full of holes as you would need to do if you had separate size holdfasts and bench dogs. Holdfasts are useful not only on the bench top, but also on the bench face. A good bench should be designed to clamp on that surface as well. To do that though, you need holdfast holes in the legs, and you need a bench where the edge of the top is on the same plane as the legs. It amazes me how many benches neglect this important design feature. If you're spending good money on a bench, you don't want a design flaw that limits what you can do with it. So you should insist that the top be on the same plane as the legs. Finally, a good bench should have adequate tool storage. Some benches have trays in the top. I hate trays in the top. They fill with wood shavings and tools that you're too lazy to put away, and they limit the amount of overall workspace that you have on your bench top. I prefer a cabinet beneath the bench like this one. This one happens to have six drawers and two cabinet doors, and it also has a feature that I really like, which is a tray beneath the bench top. A bench isn't just a work surface, it's a major tool. With the proper features, it can be the most versatile tool in your shop. So, just like any major tool, a quality bench isn't going to come cheap. Joburg benches range from about $300 to nearly $3,000, depending on the size, tool storage, and other features. So, just as you wouldn't go out and buy a table saw without doing your homework, you should know what to look for when you're shopping for a workbench. And I hope this video helps. See you next time.